We've investigated the problem of when two groups are isomorphic. Now, we consider methods for showing that two groups are not isomorphic. Our main problem is to classify all groups up to order seven. Now, recall, we have two groups, G and H. We say that G and H are isomorphic if and only if there exists a mapping pi from G to H such that we have a bijection, so pi is one to one onto, and pi is a homomorphism. So pi preserves group multiplication. So this says, if I multiply x and y and g, apply pi. It's the same as if we apply pi to x and y in g, multiply in h. Note, what isomorphism essentially says, g and h are the same group, they're just labeled differently. Now, we'll have a list of qualities preserved by isomorphism. So if I want to show that two groups are not isomorphic, we just show that the qualities on one side don't line up with the qualities on the other. Some of these qualities. First, we have cardinality. So that'll be preserved because we have a bijection. Then we have orders of elements. So if an element x in G has order k, under an isomorphism, pi of x will also have order k. Then we have orders of subgroups. We have the quality of cyclic or abelian. And we also have normal subgroups. So we'll show two and four. And then the others we'll just note in examples. Now, for two, we have the following result. So if I have a homomorphism, pi going from g to h, if the order of the element x in G is finite, then we have that the order of pi of x divides the order of x. If we have an isomorphism, then the order of pi of x is equal to the order of x. Now, let's suppose the order of x is equal to k. So that's going to be the smallest positive integer such that x to the k is equal to the identity element in G. I'm going to apply Okay, we take pi of x, raise it to the kth power. By the homomorphism property, we can move the k to the inside. That's equal to the identity element. And then when I apply pi, we get the identity element in h. So the order of pi of x might be equal to k, but it might be smaller. And if it's smaller, it just has to be a divisor of k. So k is equal to m times the order of pi of x. So that says, order of pi of x divides the order of x. Now, if we have an isomorphism, let's suppose pi of x to the jth power is equal to the identity with j between 0 and k, including 0. Now, this means we have that e, the identity in h, is equal to pi of x to the jth power equals pi of x to the j. So that means x to the j is in the kernel of pi. Now, that's a problem. Since I have an isomorphism, our map is 1 to 1. And we know if we have a homomorphism that's 1 to 1, the kernel has to be equal to just the identity element. So that means x to the j is equal to the identity element in g. But by this condition here, we're going to have to force j to be equal to 0, because the order, this k, the smallest positive integer such that x to the k is equal to zero. Now, here's the answer to our main problem. The isomorphism classes for groups of order less than or equal to seven. In our list, we have in each entry, the cyclic group of order n, so z mod n under addition, and when n is equal to 4, we have the extra class of the direct product of z2 with itself. When n equals 6, we have the extra class for the symmetric group on three letters. Now, when we consider n equal to 2, 3, 5, or 7, in that case, the order is equal to a prime, say p. We have a result from last time that says there's only one class. So our group must be isomorphic to z mod p under addition. That leaves us with n equal to 4 and n equals 6. 
for n equal to 4, first we'll show direct product of z2 with itself is not isomorphic to z mod 4. To do that, we just compare the orders of elements. So for direct product of z mod 2 with itself, we have all order pairs with entries in z mod 2, so 0 or 1. We know that the identity element has order 1, so 0, 0. All other elements have order 2. For z mod 4, okay, with the elements 0, 1, 2, 3, the orders are going to be given by the identity has order 1, 1 has order 4, 3 has order 4, and 2 has order 2. So for instance, if we take 2 plus 2, we get 4, which goes to 0, so 2 has order 2. Now, by comparing, the orders of elements are not matching, so there's no way that these two groups can be isomorphic. Now, we're not done. We have to show that there are no other isomorphism classes. For that, I have the following result. So, proposition, if we're in a group where the order of every element is one or two, then our group is abelian. Now, to see this, well, if order of every element is one or two, we have the identity element with order one, and all the other elements have order two. So in any case, we're going to have x squared is equal to the identity. If we multiply both sides by x inverse, I get x equals x inverse for all x in the group. Okay, and that even holds for the identity element. Now, let's check our property for abelian. So I would need x times y equals y times x for all x and y in the group. So x times y, that's equal to x inverse times y inverse. For the inverse rule of a product, we have, okay, normally it would be x, y inverse. We reverse the order, put the inverses on. If I have x inverse y inverse, that's equal to y, x inverse. Now, y, x is an element in our group, so it's equal to its inverse, so we get y, x. So we have the x, y is equal to y, x, and g is abelian. Let's assume the order of g is 4. If g has an element x of order 4, then we can write g as identity x, x squared, x cubed, then x to the fourth is equal to the identity. So we see that g is a cyclic group of order 4, so it's isomorphic to z mod 4. In general, if we have a group with n elements and there's an element of order n, then g is going to be cyclic of order n, so isomorphic to z mod n. Now, if there's no element of order 4, by Lagrange's theorem, all elements in the group have order 1 or 2. So the order has to divide the order of the group, which is 4. If I pick any x and y of order 2, order 2 says, okay, x squared is equal to the identity, so x equals x inverse, y equals y inverse. So if I multiply x times y, we're not going to get the identity. If we got the identity, then the inverse of x would be equal to y, but we know that they're distinct. Also, if we had xy equal to x or y, we could use cancellation, and then we'd have either x is the identity or y is the identity. So x times y is a distinct element in the group, from e, x, or y. A similar argument shows that yx is a distinct element from e, x, or y. So xy equals yx. Now note, that shows that our group is abelian without using my result from the previous board. So I didn't need that result, but we'll keep it because it's a nice result. Now, we want to construct an isomorphism between G and Z2 cross Z2. Okay, so it's worth noting this gets the special name Klein group. I want to send the identity to 0, 0. I'll just send X to 1, 0 and Y to 0, 1. So that forces x, y to go to 1, 1. So straightforward to check that we have a homomorphism. That gives our isomorphism. So that takes care of all isomorphism classes when the order of the group is 4. Now, interesting side result. If we're in a finite group where every element satisfies x squared equals the identity, then g is isomorphic to a finite product of z2s. Order of g is 2 to the n, where n is the number of factors. 
And G also has a structure of a vector space over Z2. So G admits some interesting linear algebra. Now, let's suppose we have the order of the group equal to six. So we claim the only isomorphism classes are those of Z mod six and S3. Now, Z mod six is abelian, S3 is non-abelian, so we'll show that these are distinct classes by just showing that the abelian property is preserved under isomorphism. Okay, another way to show that these are different, just check the orders of the elements. Now, proposition, if G is isomorphic to H and G is abelian, then H is also abelian. We have an isomorphism pi from G to H. Because this is a bijection, it's onto. So that means every element in our group H, say H, can be written as pi times some x. Now, let's suppose H1 equals pi of x, H2 equals pi of y. We follow our nose. H1, H2 is pi of x, pi of y. We combine using the homomorphism property, so I have pi of xy. I can reverse by the abelian property in G, so that's equal to pi of yx. We pull apart using homomorphism, and then I get H2, H1. So H1, H2 is equal to H2, H1, and H is abelian. To show that we only have two isomorphism classes, we proceed as before. So we'll assume that we have a group of order six. First, if that group has an element of order six, then G is cyclic of order six, and it's isomorphic to Z mod six. If there's no element of order six, then there must be an element of order three. So if not, Lagrange says all elements are of order one or two. We use our result from before to say that G is abelian, and then we note that if we argue as before, if there are only two generators, we have Z2 cross Z2. If we have three generators, we'll have Z2 cross Z2 cross Z2. So in this case, we have four elements. In this case, we have eight elements. If we add any more generators, we'll have more than eight elements. So we'll never have these conditions when we have a group of order six. Now, We'll let H be the subgroup generated by X. So X has order three. So we have identity X, X squared. We're isomorphic to Z mod three. And we note since H has index two in G, so six divided by three is two, the index two theorem says H is normal in G. Now, if I consider the quotient group, G mod H, we have two elements, H, and y times h for some element that's not in h. We note, as an element of g mod h, y h has order two. So that might not say that y squared has order two, it just says that y squared is in h. The possibilities, y squared is equal to the identity x or x squared. So those are the elements in h. Now, since x has order three possibilities, if y squared is the identity, then we'll have the order of y is equal to two. Otherwise, okay, if it's equal to x or x squared, okay, I'll note in a group z mod three, if we're not the identity, our elements have order three. So that would mean, since y squared is equal to an element of order three, we have the order of y is equal to six. Now that we've ruled out so we have to have the order of y is equal to two. And we've seen before that that means y is equal to y inverse. Now, since h is normal in g, if we conjugate h by y, we get h back. So that says either y x y inverse is equal to x or x inverse. If it's equal to x, then we have that y x is equal to x y, and we could show that the order of x, y is equal to six, just by using the fact that we could push x and y past each other. Now, that we've ruled out, so we must have that y, x, y inverse is equal to x inverse. Now, if we put this relation with y squared is the identity, 
and x cubed is the identity. These are the defining relations for a dihedral group. So D6, which is the same as the symmetries of an equilateral triangle. So S3 also. For additional examples, let's consider some groups of order 12. So we've seen before the dihedral group with 12 elements. So these are the symmetries of a regular hexagon. And we've seen a four alternating group on four letters. So these are the rigid motions of a regular tetrahedron. Now, I won't compare everything that I can between the two groups, just note some easy facts. First, for D12, we have one normal subgroup of order six, the rotation subgroup. Okay, and that's normal by the index two theorem. It's 12 divided by six is two. We have one normal subgroup of order three, so that's gonna be the rotations by two pi thirds in either direction and the identity. You can just show that's normal directly, or you can note there's only two elements of order three, if we list all the elements here with their orders. So we're only gonna have one subgroup of order three, and if I have a unique subgroup of a given order, it must be normal. So we'll show that later. Then we can list elements. So we're going to have six reflections, so they're all of order two. Then for the rotations, we have orders one, two. Order three, we have two of. Order six, we have two of. On the other side, alternating group on four letters, we'll have no subgroups of order six. There are going to be four subgroups of order three, but none of them are normal. And if we list elements, we have one element of order one, three elements of order two, and eight elements of order three. So we see many ways that show that these two groups are not isomorphic. For a final example, let's consider G equal to the rationals under addition, H equal to the integers under addition. We have that the integers are cyclic, but the rationals are not, so these two groups are not isomorphic. Now, let's just show non-isomorphism directly. So let's suppose I have an isomorphism pi from the integers to the rationals. Because the integers are cyclic, okay, they're generated by the element one, that generator carries over to be a generator for the rationals. So I can say that the rationals are just generated by the element pi one. Now, a feature of the rationals is, every element in the rationals has a square root. So if we have a given rational x, we could write that as x over two plus x over two. This is a square root under addition. Note, if x is rational, then x divided by two is also rational. Now, our generator then has a square root. We have the pi's on two, so I don't know what that square root is gonna be, but I do know that I can write as pi k for some k in the integers. So I can write pi one equals pi k plus pi k. I put everything to one side and we have pi of two k minus one equals zero. Now, because k is an integer, that means two k minus one is non-zero. So we have more than one element in the kernel. The kernel is a subgroup of the integers, so that means our kernel is equal to the integral multiples of n for some integer n greater than or equal to one. Now, by our isomorphism theorem from the previous talk, we have a surjective homomorphism or onto homomorphism that says our image group is isomorphic to our domain group modded out by the kernel of pi. So that means the rationals isomorphic to z mod n for some n greater than or equal to one. That's a contradiction because this is an infinite set and this is a finite set. So we have our result.